Hey everybody out there, my name is Drynix and a little bit of an update for the channel for you guys today as well as a little bit of a peer into the future of the channel at this point. I will put some Darkest Dungeon in the background mostly because I am reviewing it for Tech Raptor at this point. Now I did start over even though they provided heroes for the end of the game and some of the stuff I haven't experienced yet. To be a objective reviewer and to understand the full experience I started from the beginning because there have been significant changes that have been made since the start of the game in its early access phase. I want to get the full experience, so I started over. Those who have been following me on Facebook and Twitter have probably seen a little bit more nervousness out of me over the last several weeks. And if you aren't following me on Facebook and Twitter, I'll leave those links in the description below. I gotta get this running as a legitimate business sooner rather than later, and so I need to take a look at what steps I can do in order to improve that. Now I have joined things like YT Talk in terms of forums and try to promote myself more, but I took a look at the analytics and in particular what videos have done well and what videos have done all right at this point taking a look at that it's become clear to me that i need to focus a little bit more on mid-level releases at this point now things like mad max things like transformers devastation they haven't done well in comparison to everything else but when i take a look at things like shadow run hong kong when i take a look at rodea the sky soldier when i take a look at onichiabra z2 chaos they've done a lot better than i thought they would in terms of that mid-level release and i do think i need to focus more on that so in the description below there is a straw poll for the game that I will cover of the mid-level or higher level releases in the first week of February. There are games like Gravity Rush Remastered, that new Digimon game for the PS4, uh, Nitro Blast Plus, it's a fighting game, and then XCOM 2. I know XCOM 2 is sort of the odd man out there because I feel like that hits the AAA sort of kind of, but the fact of the matter is is that I do love XCOM and I do feel like it's a little bit un more under the radar than some things like Call of Duty or things like you know Uncharted for example. That way you guys can become involved in the channel as well as you know telling me what you guys want to see and hopefully that is a capture of what the general gaming audience wants to see in terms of those you know mid-level releases. Now I'll do that for a couple weeks to see how it goes and see how those videos do at this point. Now, does that mean I will stop my indie game coverage? Hell no. The fact of the matter is, is that this is what the channel was made for, to give those games and to match them with you guys. So that won't stop. But the fact is, is that for those mid-level games, those games that I probably won't get a necessarily a review copy for, that I'll take a little bit more time with, then I do want to make that sort of the project you know, the main project in the background while I work on some of those other indie titles that are a little bit faster and a little bit more straightforward. Now, in terms of the video style at this point, it's clear that reviews in terms of scripted reviews do a lot better in terms of, you know, people liking the coverage and, you know, not having problems with the coverage than my sort of rambling portions. Now, I got to be careful on that because I do want to cover a variety of games and trying to cover so many games in a small amount of time and scripting them all is a problem. The fact of the matter is is that it's easier to do a rambling portion and have to re-edit over and over again than to do some of the scripted portion and the heavy editing that some of those videos take. If I want to keep the coverage up in terms of the number games, I have to, you know, make a compromise there. So that will be a ratio that I will be working with in the background. I will be spending more time trying to promote myself at this point. Again, I said that I would, you know, take a look at the YT Talk forums, you know, trying to, you know, push myself more out there in social media. I have been tweeting a lot more just so that I can, you know, make connections at this point. Now, in terms of collabs and things like that, that's where I think things get a little bit hairy for me because I'm not a Let's Player. I am not a person who necessarily does well in a humorous environment, even though at times I can, you know, have my moments. But the thing is, is that I'm a reviewer and I don't like my review being bi maybe biased by somebody else. So it's a little bit strange on that level and I'm not exactly sure how collabs can help me in that element. Any feedback that I can get from anyone who's sort of similar in nature at this point, I love to hear at this point. And again, I am trying to get advice from other YouTubers who are of a similar nature to me um, in terms of the content that I create. Now, those who have probably been following me on Twitter have noticed that I've been doing a little bit more writing for Tech Raptor. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of video content for them, and I do wish that I did more video content for them in terms of the bigger videos for them at this point. But I have been, you know, doing a little bit more writing, in particular with the YouTube space. That was a little bit weird for me. 
Now, not that I was assigned the, the topic in question, but I've been bringing up issues in terms of like Microplier being hacked, things like the game Grumps leaving Polaris, the whole Maker Studio situation in terms of the sort of privatizing of videos. And those have done reasonably well compared to everything else, especially compared to some of the game stuff that I've written about. That's sort of depressing in my mind in terms of, you know, okay, how did that, you know, make it? And, you know, writing about a new game that had just come out you know, didn't, but they are reasonable issues in terms of like Yandare simulator being banned from Twitch and Twitch absolutely not responding to any questions. Um, one thing I will say about the reporting world in terms of, you know, gaming, no one responds, literally no one responds unless if you are doing PR for them, basically, which is sad, but unfortunately that is the business as it is right now. So I've been using that as a supplementary tool. Again, that doesn't pay the bills, but it could help in the long run. Now, the next section of this video will be controversial to some, and I do need to explain what's going on and to make sure that you guys understand exactly what my decision process was regarding it. Several people have come to me in the past and in the last couple of weeks even, or the last couple of days even, talking to me about, hey, look, I would love to support the channel financially. I would love to be able to, you know, put a little bit of money in so that you can get some of these fears out of the way in terms of being able to live, you know, a reasonable life in terms of, okay, I have health insurance, so on and so forth. Now, a lot of people have approached me saying, why don't you start a Patreon? I've been sort of mixed on that at this point. On one hand, I think Patreon gets sort of a bad rap because of how abused it can come in terms of people using it in sort of nefarious ways. It's very much a tool, and if people abuse the tool, then it gets this sort of stigma about it that it's not useful to people. Um, people, you know, begging for money at this point. With that said, the tool itself is reasonable in terms of being able to fund things like TechRaptor, for example. Those YouTubers or those, you know, artists who don't necessarily make the money in terms of ad revenue at this moment, but could use the boost in terms of a daily, weekly, monthly thing. With a lot of thought put into it, I thought about, you know, do I open one or do I not? I decided to open one at this point, and the link is in the description below as well as at the main channel. Now, I want to be perfectly clear. I don't expect people to donate at this point. If you if you watch the channel and you've been watching from the start, I appreciate it at this point. Have you you've been using ad blocker? Well, I could go on and on about the, you know the problems with ad blocker. I still appreciate that you view the videos at this point. With that said, for those who do want to donate and those who do want to help out, I have opened it at this point. Will I have tiers of rewards? No, I don't think in terms of providing, you know, you know, you know, not scaled content, but, you know, tiered content. I don't I don't find that useful. I do say that I will give a reward in terms of anybody who donates. I will match them up in terms of a game. They can contact me and I can, you know, try to match them to their, you know, specific tastes. Even though you can do that in terms of the videos as well in on the channel, for those people who haven't necessarily watched everything, I can get an idea of exactly what you like and offer a couple of options for you at this point. Sort of like a gaming matchmaker per se. Do I expect that to fix my problems? No, not at all. Do I even think anyone is going to donate? Probably not. Even those who approached me asking, yeah, you know, hey, I want to donate some money. And I understand that they're probably being completely honest at that point, And I don't have any reason to not believe them. I just don't see people paying for things like that where they can get information elsewhere. Yes, I feel like I make a great quality of video and I try to hit the, you know, every aspect of it. But, you know, again, a lot of the people here, they've got hard lives at this point. They've got, you know, stuff that they've got to look at. And I understand completely at this point. The options there for those who want it at this point. And anyone who does, I do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I also won't bring it up in terms of the videos, at least that often. Maybe once every two weeks or once every four weeks at this point. I don't want to say, like, add it to the end card, for example, because I just don't see that being, you know, useful at this point in terms of, oh, hey, you can donate to my Patreon. It feels like more of a begging situation that I don't want to do at this point. I don't want to be, you know, hounding people for it. Now, finally, in terms of sort of my stuff, in terms of what I know I can improve on, a lot of people have been bringing up some good comments lately in terms of what I can do to improve. And the big thing I need to figure out is the whole transitional statement situation. 
when I'm doing a rambling video, the fact of the matter is, is that for some reason, I always go to the same phrase over and over and over again. Now, the way that I do videos in terms of lately, I've done a lot of different styles at this point, but in particular with the non-scripted videos lately, it's been things like, okay, I, I have a set of note cards and a set of ideas, and I try to record as much as I can. When I don't feel like it's up to quality, I stop and re-record at this point hitting certain cut points in terms of, okay, I got a minute out of that, let me stop, and then, you know, use that footage, or use that um, audio clip, and then go on to the next. With that said, what one of the weaknesses of that editing style is, is that when I go to transition, so that, you know, I've done a minute section there, and I want to go to the next section, sometimes I forget exactly where I am, and I end up putting a transitional statement, like, at this point, or in this clip, so on and so forth. What in particular seems to be the major problem there is the fact that I reuse the phrase over and over and over and over and over again. In the Crashlands video, it was the phrase in question. At one point, it was at this point. What's weird about it is the fact that, despite the fact that I have all these different phrases I've used in different videos, when I'm inside one video, I use the same phrase. I don't switch it up, and I don't understand why I'm doing that at this point. Now, part of that could be the fact that I need to go back and re-listen to it you know, reasonably at this point, you know, maybe you listen to it for a third or fourth time. When you go through the editing process that I do and you finally get that video down to, you know, the 12th minute and everything like that, it's hard to go back and say, okay, that doesn't sound bad. Or, you know, that I've used too many in questions at this point. Because unfortunately, what it does is the fact that you have to re-record everything. And I do want to get things in a timely manner. Um, Part of that will be helped with more scripting in terms of the stuff that I'm doing. Part of it will be more confidence on my side because my confidence has, has been weighing, weighing lately because of the stuff that's happening with the channel. But with that said, I've got to really do something to fix that at this point. Now, in terms of the overall style stuff um, and what's going on in the background, I did finally upgrade the Windows 10 because the preview of a game that I will be doing in terms of... It's called um, something with uh, stories at this point. Um stories hold on i'm bringing up the email as we speak right now do 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 do, do. stories the path of destiny um one of the problems i had with windows 8 was the fact that hey guess what um a certain visual studio 2015 package would not up would not upgrade on that and unfortunately it finally came to a head with the stories portion I wasn't. I was able to get around it at first with other ones, able to use a you know an older package. This one wasn't the case, and so I did finally upgrade to Windows 10. I hopefully won't see that much of an effect on the videos in question, but you know it is Windows. God knows that it will do something to the system in question. As to what to expect for this week in particular, the fact of the matter is is that this week feels like a letdown compared to the last week, especially in the indie scene. The indie scene last week had a lot of interesting games and a lot of things that, you know, really was a strong week in terms of overall releases. Crashlands comes to mind, Bug Butcher, even things like Death Like by Game Show had something interesting for me to take a look at, and I didn't even get to some of the other ones within that week. So that was a good week, but when I take a look at this week, a lot of the bigger titles are things like Final Fantasy Explorers for the 3DS. I don't cover 3DS games because, well, the fact of the matter is 3DS hardware capture stuff is expensive as hell. Let's just put it that way. Um, the Rise of the Tomb Raider PC port comes out. I'm not sure if people want to see a port uh, report on that. Uh, maybe at this point, and I do love the Tomb Raider franchise. Um, in the indie scene, it just seems like this week is just sort of barren at this point. I do have a Rabby Rabby video I'm going to try to do on Thursday in terms of a, you know, bullet hell platformer, which is a weird statement to say the least. I do have a preview of stories, which I mentioned before, as well as a key for an early access day game of hero defense, which I don't usually do early access in terms of a regular video. I will probably do a dev letter on that. But um, I also want to sort of cover Bombshell. I am wary of the launch day embargo on that, and I don't have a key for it, though. But it's one of those games where it's just like, okay, it's 3D Realms, or at least the what was 3D Realms. It had an interesting concept. Maybe I'll take a look at it. And it is in that mid-level portion that I said I would take a look at. Now, in terms of the sort of downer status that I have sort of put on this video, I will say that there have been things that have lifted me up. I always want to thank you guys for interacting with me and thank you for watching my videos, giving me your know, feedback, being, you know, 
you know, straight to the truth on things, especially people like Don Parsons over at Tech Raptor, and you know, all the people like you know Captain Fluffy Muffin, you know Dynasty Star, all you guys, um, and it, even the new people who I've interacted with. The person who I interacted with, Crashlands, you know, going back and forth on whether the game was right for him. I love doing that for people, and I love you know trying to find the right game for you. So I thank you all for watching videos and giving me the feedback and making sure that you know you point out that I say in question in, in a video a lot, <clears throat> and my voice is going out. That's been happening a lot more lately, unfortunately. Um, but again, I will keep this up as long as I can, guys. And I thank you for watching and. You'll see a little bit more content from me in the later in the week. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button in the middle of the screen. The last video I did will be in the top left, and a related video to this will be in the top right. I do have a Twitter handle at the bottom left, and a Facebook page at the bottom right. And of course, you can always subscribe to the Google Plus portion. Anyway, thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.